like here. Okay. And that kind of feels bilateral. That's and good. That's, I, like, that's like a facet joint sign. Mm -hmm. okay. When I walk, it's more here. Yeah. And then it could even go straight in here. Like this whole line, even here, and then it goes into this um, initial tuberosity. Um, can you go into extension, please? Does that cause pain? Yeah, a little bit. And where is the pain? Right there. Right there on both left and right sides of the spine and in the spine? Yeah, it feels like central spinal. Does it feel like it's muscle tissue or central in the spine? Central. Okay. Does it feel like it's one inch to each side of the spine as well? Mm -hmm. Go back into extension, see if you can feel it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'd say so. Kind of feels like here. Okay. Brian, are you seeing what I'm seeing when she's going into extension, which looks like around the L4? Do you see how that tissue accumulates when she goes into extension? Yeah, it kind of gets bunchy there. It's bunchy there, yeah. Mm -hmm. So either fluid accumulation, facet joint, I don't know, a lot of interesting things. All right. Uh, Lily, can you turn so we have a lateral view? And if you're able to, where the two doors meet, pretend that's the plumb line where the two doors okay. meet. Yeah, see if you can line that up with gallbladder 40. I think it is. Okay, that looks pretty good. Good. And then just look forward. What I see is an anterior hip shift. Yeah, me too. I see possible pelvic rotation to the right. A little bit of the rib cage coming back. It's not extreme, but a little bit of the, the kidney chi chi and blood deficiency posture. Yep, I agree. Should we look at her other side? Sure. Yeah, more noticeable this, uh, this direction. All right, so Lily, can you um, stick out your tongue for us? Come walk to the camera, let's take a look at your tongue. It's kind of hard with this lighting, isn't it? Yeah. I can't tell if it's pale or not. It didn't look pale, but that could have been the lighting. Yeah, maybe a little. Yeah, she's got the teeth marks. Looks like she's <laughs> like, yeah, it looks like chain blood deficiency. We could have the person line up like how we do it in SMAC, left side and right side from a lateral view and see. Yeah, and see. That's probably the best way, right? Yeah, so we can just, just out, have the person. Yeah, there you go. Turn to the side, look down your feet, make sure they're nice and straight. But this is where the angle becomes a little mm -hmm. tricky. Yeah, that's what I had an issue with this one. Where the camera placement is. So maybe we can make sure we guide the practitioner to tell the patient to line up the camera with the midline of the body. It's almost like if they actually put duct tape down or some kind of line down mm -hmm. that's parallel to the wall and pointing to the camera.
Somebody could be able to put down a, a piece of duct tape or string, making sure that it's 90 degrees away from the wall. At least then we've got an angle. And then the, the patients will line up the camera to that string. At least that will, that's one variable that should help. <laughs> what do you think, B? Yeah, I think that's good. I mean, it's, it's nothing's perfect, but it's all the best we can do. So I think that's the idea. Here I see a uh, left rotation. Yeah, so now we should look at the front and look at rib cage to ASIS and see if that. That's why I think we're going to have to have a few tests to be able to sort of put them all together and see what's. Um... Can you put your hands to the side, please? Mm -hmm. There you go. So, so this way I'd be looking at kind of a line from say liver 13 to the opposite ASIS on each side. And actually it looks kind of like the pelvis. It looks like that's shorter from top left to bottom right to me. I don't know. I haven't felt, I, I feel like this is all very, you know, it'd be nice to go in and start palpating now. Couldn't you tell the patient to maybe put their hands here and then look down and save once forward? Just by watching like, you do that, I can see a left rotation. This one's forward, yeah. She's saying the left one's forward though. That would be a right rotation. Yeah. Her right hand is more forward. That's not what I see, but okay. So when you look down, your left is more forward? Oh wait. Are your feet even? As I'm standing here, the right's coming forward, yeah. There you go. So yeah. that All right, so then this is another good assessment that I think we can have the patients do. Brian, what do you think? Mm-hmm. Okay, let me make a note of that one. That one should go in the outline. I wonder if they almost be better seated. You mean like the brocade exercise? Yeah, I mean, not necessarily with having all the other stuff going on, but just rotating in a seated position because then the pelvis is going to be a little bit more um, more fixed. So you'd be looking at thoracic rotation there? Yeah, so if we, if, you know, sometimes you're, you're looking through a camera, it's a little tricky. The person's looking down, putting their hands on it. It's, it's a little unprecise. So if we see a left rotation and then we have something to where she it's easier to rotate one way or the other. It just gives confirmation. It starts, it starts painting a more of a complete picture. So because if somebody had a right rotation in the pelvis and they found it a lot easier to turn to the left, they had, they had greater range of motion and more ease turning to the left than to the right, that would indicate to me that they have that sort of counter rotation in the torso and those two would kind of match. So then you would suspect Lily when she sits down, can, Lily, can you grab a chair and put it in front of the camera? When she sits down, because she's got a left pelvic rotation, you would think her ease of movement would be right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's watch. What am I doing with my hands? Uh, sitting down in the chair. Hands can be to the side. It's hard, okay. Brian's like looking behind you. Brian, do you want to direct it how you want to do it? Yeah, I would just like, like you're really looking as far behind you as you can from, yep.
So Brian, what I saw there was a difficulty with trunk rotation when she was going to the left. Yeah, me too. And we looked easier to go to the right. Yeah. Yeah, which confirms well because wasn't it a left rotation? It was a left pelvic rotation, which would assume to be a, tr a right trunk rotation. Which which would make it easier to turn to the right because those tissues are already oriented in that direction. Yes. Okay. Well, this makes okay. sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so if you can go ahead and just bend over nice and slow as if touching your toes. So bend from the waist? Uh, just go ahead and bend. I don't want to give direction yet. Yeah, just kind of see where it bends easiest. And then up? Yep. Oh, yeah, boy, that's, you can see a lot with that. That was great. I needed to see it again. It was kind of small. <laughs> Watch your L4. Yeah. T12, actually, T12 to L4. Hips, I'm having a harder time seeing. I, it looks like the hamstrings lengthen pretty, pretty well to me. When you say T12 to L4, you're saying you don't see as much movement there. Yeah, it moves as one segment. Watch. Yeah. It goes, stops, and then can you see how it just loses? It's a, there, there's a really good view there. Yeah. So from like 120 degrees, 180 degrees, the T12 really goes back posterior and offsets the lower, the upper lumbar. Mm -hmm. the pelvis seems good. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's a little hard with the, the, the color of the pants, the hard, hard to see the movement, but it looks like it's lengthening in the hamstrings well. Lily, can we see the other side, please? Almost looks like the hamstrings and pelvis moves a little bit better on this side. What do you see, B? I didn't notice that. But now that you pointed it out, I think I agree. There's more movement of pelvis on femur on this side yeah. than there is on the other side. Cool. All right. Uh, post A little bit of an answer and hip shift, but we're not there yet. More? Uh, how, about, how about posterior view? So this is forward flexion. This one, do we want to be a little closer again? Yeah, a little closer. Because you're mainly looking at the back now. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Be nice to see what happens with the feet and knees here, though, too. Yeah. It's like a rotation, though, on the right, the uh, right side coming back. Do you agree? Sorry, I was looking at I was looking at so as is there. Say what did you Yeah, the back. That's what I'm saying. The right side was coming back. Yeah.
So just the observations of the dimples, it looks like she's got an elevated ilium on the right. Mm -hmm. Pant lines kind of matching it. Okay. Yeah, she was the tricky one yesterday too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's because she brings her weight more to the left foot. Lily, do you feel like the weight's equal on both feet? Um, no. It seems like you're stronger yeah. on your left side, yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like an asymmetrical hip shift so much is that she, she kind of weights herself more on the left foot. Could you try going down and keeping it um, even yeah. on both feet? Yeah. Let's see what happens. I bet that'll reveal more of the... That showed more. Yeah, that showed more. That's where I started to see it from yesterday, where she does this angle. First, first she goes left, then she swings right. Yeah. Toward the end. Okay. That's good. Thanks, Lily. This way? Sure, we'll also go the other way as well. Okay, good. So go back to neutral. Yeah, go back to neutral, and then come back into extension, then rotation. That cause pain? A little pinchy in here. Okay, all right. So lateral raphe, QL region. Okay. Other side? Uh, please. Yeah, that's pinchy as well. Same area? Same area. That's fine. You can really see the elevated ilium on the right, so left mm -hmm. tilt to the pelvis. You can see L4, L5 tilting to the left. And then coming back to midline around what, L3? Yeah, that's what it looks like. Doesn't seem to go up really high. Uh huh. So, Lily, can you weight bear on one leg and then on the opposite leg? Raise it at least 90 degrees slowly. A little bit higher. Okay, thank you. And then down. And can you repeat, please? That's what it looked like yesterday. That looked like a positive Gillette's to me. So I think we're going for mostly facet joint problems in L3, L4, L5. Mm -hmm. Maybe some SI joint involvement. It's hard to do because we're not palpating. Sure. Maybe some thoracolumbar junction because with the indicate body language from yesterday, she traced along the nerves going toward the SI joint and she also traced going toward the greater trochanter.
to use your, your forearm on your, just rest it on your, your knee, thigh. There you go. And then kind of hold your hip and then kind of like you're about to just do a little bit of a minor adjustment. Push the knee a little bit and turn to the opposite side a little bit. And you want me to tell you what I feel? Well, tell me if that causes pain. It causes, yeah, it's like a dull pain kind of right here. And, right, I can't see where you're pointing. Is that where you have the pain or does it feel more like in the hip itself? Like in the front the pain, of the The pain does yeah. come here at times, here and here, but then it also sometimes, when, I, when I'm walking, the pain's like here. Okay. But if, um, it, it also has been here. That looks like thoracolumbar junction, maybe. That would be an interesting thing to be able to check out on her is thoracolumbar junction syndrome. Yeah. But in that position that she just did that you coached her through, Brian? Yeah. With a modified test? Mm-hmm. Faber test? I think, yeah. maybe that, I think that glute medius and minimus might also be showing up that we also because of the because of the position you're in yeah. yeah i think it's showing the imbalance between the abductors and the adductors which mm -hmm. helps support what we saw in the asymmetrical hip shift yeah it was such a deviation so good yeah this has been extremely useful so far okay so that would be on the so those ones would be locked long the medius and the mm -hmm. minimus Okay. Okay. So logistically doing a, a modified favor four, it looks like Lily was able to do that even with the arms of the chair. So that's good because some people will have arms of the chair at their house. Mm -hmm. the dining room table, they don't have it. So good. That was good information. So Lily, can you go into a supine favor four and just let us know what you feel? It, this would be like a passive resting. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, let's just see what happens. And she can actually, she can actually, she can contract her abductors and bring her leg down a little bit or push down. Let's see. True. So you don't need to see this. You want me to just tell you? Uh, probably we should see it just to be able to direct you through it. I'm not sure how to do that. Okay. I'm just curious about this. So what I did before? Here. And then. Yeah, and then place your hand on it and push down. Yeah, I feel that. I feel it. Like right in my butt. Like right, I don't know, you probably can't see that. I'm keeping my hand on it right there. So it's yeah, okay. This deep inside there. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Gosh, that's really good information. So. Let's do both ways because everybody's body is going to be a little bit different. Yeah. And on your affected side, yeah, grab your knee and bring it up to the opposite shoulder. So like with this arm? Yeah, give your knee a hug with both hands. Give your knee yeah. a hug with both hands and bring it to the opposite shoulder. Bring it way up there. Does that cause any pain? I'm getting like that crunch in, in here. Mm -hmm. Anterior aspect? Yeah. Um, no pain in the back. Okay, well that was useful because that crunch in the front also indicates possibly what the psoas that we saw in the posterior, mm -hmm. that imbalance and her joint capsule is probably having something to do with this as too. Yeah. Yeah, it's like right on that so as distal, so as. Yeah, she's like pointed lesser trochanter in that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so that's information. Kind of confirms. It's been wonderful. Question mark still, but it's still, it's, it gives me some confirmation. Yeah, and it, it there's enough here to build a really good exercise self-care treatment plan with yoga yeah. tools and all of that. So this is, this is wonderful. Uh, from straightforward, 90 degrees would be 
straight to the side on both sides? And could you give an estimate of what the angle that you're able to get to is? Yeah. So that's zero. There's 45. Okay, good. I'm like 55. Okay. I, thoughts, I can't go any further. Okay. Okay, back to zero. That one stops at 45, if that. Maybe 40 degrees. Yeah, interesting because- I can't go any further. I, this has always been really bad, hard on me. I've never been able to go very far with this. Even when I did yoga, so then I- Cross the other leg though, right? Or are you gonna go to the right? It's on which side, yeah. I can't remember, what do I do? So now I'm going this way? The left. To the other side. Mm, it helps at maybe 10 degrees at the most. Yeah, so her glue's gotta get worked on. Mm -hmm. And this one. That it doesn't really change it, guys, at all. I mean, on that it's, side. It's not yeah. noticeable. That's as far as I can go. Just can you estimate the angle because our your hands are not. Oh yeah, forty five. Okay. And it's not pain. I just I can't go any further. It's like a stop. And this one's same. It stops. It's a little bit less, maybe like forty. Okay. Degrees. And we cross the left, yeah, left over the right. And then go to the Go to the left. The other way. So I gain maybe five degrees there. Maybe 10 degrees more. Okay. That's the same. Not a big change. One arm and the opposite leg straighten. And you're keeping that stabilization of the spine, you know, kind of flat on the floor. Okay, so before you start it, see if you can kind of engage the abdominals a little bit to really hold, yeah, yeah. And keep, as you're doing the movement, keep that stabilization there. That's it, yep. So you're engaging those abdominals to prevent, it's almost like an anti-extension exercise. 